Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday, <clears throat> which means uh, it is the last day of our review for our test. So you're probably, if you're at home right now and you weren't here on Friday, this is a very good video for you to go over the questions that you will have in your test on Monday and to ensure that you uh, know what you're supposed to know for the exam. Uh, the first question, we're starting at 7 here because we already had a video on questions 1 through 6 is true, true, false. It took a little bit longer to explain those. Those are the more complicated questions on our test. We're starting here at question 7, which is a modeling question. It's modeling here a monomial of x multiplied by a monomial of negative 2x. So if we were using non-modeling, we would use associative property. We'd say x multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by x is the same thing as negative 2 multiplied by x multiplied by x we get our answer of negative 2x squared. That's if we weren't modeling. But we can take that same idea and use an area model. Because it's a monomial and a monomial, we could think of it as being the length times the width equals the area. This being the length, this being the width, and this being the area. Or length and width can be reversed. You can reverse those two. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to put one of these down as their length. So I'm going to put the x right here. And I'm going to use the algebra tile of x. Remember, this is an x. This is a negative x. This is an x squared. This is a negative x squared. This is a 1. And this is a negative 1. Those are our basic algebra tiles. So if you want to press pause and copy those down because you don't remember them, that's the basic algebra tiles we're going to use here. So x goes there for our length. And over here, we're going to put our width of negative 2x, which is the open ones like this. Negative 2x. So now we have our length and our width, and our area inside will represent the product of those two. So I box up first. Any lines I have here, I'm just going to bring straight down. And then I'm going to ask myself, this is a negative x times a positive x, which is going to make both of these negative x squareds. And my solution is still negative 2x squared. Second question is to solve by modeling. This time we have a division. So in our division, we said that the top number in our division is our area. The bottom term is our side. And this is going to be the side we don't know, our answer. So when doing it, make sure when you're, you're modeling division, you always start with the side that you do know. So I'm going to put my 2x here, a 1x, solid because it's positive. 2x, solid because it's positive. And what I'm going to do next is just give myself an open space to put my area into. I have to put 4x squared as my area. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a line down there. Oh, sorry. Let's go back in time first. I needed to draw two lines across because I also have to draw that part across. That's my start. So all I've done is I've drawn my side length, and I've given my area a blank template to be able to fit what I need to for the area, which is 4x squared. Come straight down, shade it in. That's 1x squared. That's 2x squared come straight down, that's another x squared, that's another x squared. Now I have my 4x squareds. So the solution is this. That's the question. What goes up here will be a positive x and a positive x. Because a positive times a positive is a positive. And therefore my solution will be 4x squared divided by 2x equals 2x. Question 9 is a modeling of a monomial multiplied by a binomial. And remember, if we did it without modeling, we would use distributive property. We get negative 2x times x, and we get negative 2x times negative 1. Our solution would be negative 2x squared plus 2x. That would be our solution. So we know that's going to be the answer to our modeling. So when you, when you want to make sure you got it all correct, you can actually work it out and see what it looks like. Side, side. I'm going to start with my negative 2x. Don't shade it in because it's negative. A positive x and a negative 1 is my other side. Box it up. Anything, anywhere there's a line here, like there's a line right here, so it just goes straight across. There's a line right here, so it goes straight across. Determine whether they're going to be positives or negatives. Since a positive times a negative is a negative, this is negative x squared, negative x squared. Since this is a negative times a negative, these are going to be positive x's, so I'm going to shade them in. And my solution is negative 2x squared plus 2x. Question uh, 10, 
uh, we have a binomial divided by a monomial. Always start with your side length first. So I got a 1x, a 2x, a 3x, and a 4x. Shade them in because they are a positive 4x. Bring your lines across to give yourself that blank template to be able to put your top number, which is your area, in. In that area, I have to fit 4x squareds and negative 4x. So if I go straight down here, I actually have drawn space for 4x squareds. There's there, right there, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I also have to draw four negative x's. So if I put a smaller one straight down, I have a negative x, a negative x, a negative x, and a negative x. So I've now drawn my picture. <clears throat> I can tidy it up by getting rid of the superfluous lines here that aren't necessary anymore. And that's my picture. That's what this picture says. My solution is the side that's missing, which is a positive x and a negative 1. So therefore, the answer is x minus 1. Continuing along with number 11, this time, instead of having this template like this, we kind of have the same thing, except it's actually just a rectangle. So really, when you think about it, that red line is still the same thing as the algebra tile one. The only difference is my monomial and my binomial. My monomial will be the side that doesn't have two sections. And my binomial will be, this is 5x between here and here. And this is negative 3 from here to here. Once we have that, all we have to really do is say, well, this is going to be the product of 5 and 5x, the area of this rectangle. This is going to be the product of 5 and negative 3. When I think that through, it's going to be 25x. And it's going to be negative 15. So therefore, my answer is 25x minus 15 from an area model. <clears throat> Again, this time we're using an area model for division. The area is still the top number, which is a binomial. So in here, I'm going to put part of my area and the other part of my area. My negative 4 is one of my sides. It's the monomial, so I'm going to put it here. And the missing sides up top here are going to be my answer. So this is really going to be the area divided by negative 4 will be that missing side which is going to be a positive 3x squared when I do the work. When I think about this, the area divided by the side I know will be the missing side, which is going to be a positive 2. So therefore, the missing side length is 3x squared and a positive 2. I'll just take a quick note here. Your positive sign is actually your addition sign that connects the two terms together. Question 13, we have no modeling. We're just asked to multiply a monomial by a monomial. Uh, all of you know, because you're very smart people, you're very intelligent, you know you're going to use the associative property. When which you can, If it's just multiplication, you can rearrange the multiplication. It's not going to affect the product. So 8 times 4 times x doesn't need to be rearranged. It's simply going to be 32 multiplied by x, which is the term 32x. In 14, associative property, 2 times x times negative 3 times x times x. Notice how I've changed the x squared into just x times x. makes it easier. When you do that, you get 2 times negative 3 times x times x times x, which is going to be a negative 6 x cubed. Question 15 is the division of a monomial by a monomial. We're going to write it as the coefficients are going to be divided by each other. It's kind of like, and we're going to do the variable terms are going to be divided by each other. Uh, 22 divided by negative 11 is negative 2, and x squared divided by x is x. So therefore, my solution, well, thank you. Oopsie daisy. x squared divided by x squared is going to be gone. So therefore, my solution is just going to be the answer negative 2. Right, because this is going to become negative 2. That's going to be gone. Bob's your uncle. Does anyone have an uncle, Bob? Did you? <laughs> dad, Bob's your dad. Question 16 is something we haven't seen before, but make sure you write this down. There's your work. 24 divided by, or 12 divided by 24 is actually a half. 
can be x over 1, which our final solution is simply going to be half of x, or x divided by 2. A lot of people probably didn't have that one right, uh, but it makes a lot of sense when you cross-reduce this to get 1 over 2, cross-reduce this to get x over 1. That's how you get your solution. Question 17 is the multiplication of a monomial by a monomial using associative property. That's what it breaks down to. Rearrange your coefficients to be multiplied by each other. Uh, a lot of people grab a calculator right away. Just think money, 20 cents times five. How much is 20 cents times five? A dollar or just one, right? So actually that's gonna become one uh, x squared y, and since we all know that it's very inappropriate to write one coefficient, our solution will just be x squared y. If you put the one coefficient, I'm probably going to question your intelligence. I'm going to be like, really, really? It doesn't matter. You still should be able to do it. Question 18 has the multiplication of a monomial by a binomial, which requires not associative property, it requires distributive property. So you can put your arrows in to remind yourself that each term, each term in the binomial must be multiplied by the monomial inside the brackets. So two must be multiplied by eight X, and two must be multiplied by negative one. To give you 16 X minus two is your solution, or 16 X negative two or minus two. Question 19 is actually an interesting question because it actually, this negative sign outside the brackets has two meanings. When we were talking about uh, exponents, we said that that could be thought of as the opposite of, and if you did, you're simply going to write the opposite of all of that expression, which would be simple. It would be a positive 2x squared, a negative 2x, and a positive 7. That would be your solution. Another way for you to think of it is that negative sign can actually be a negative 1 right? We could actually treat it as a negative one. And if it was a negative one, multiplying each term inside the brackets by a negative one will still get you that solution, right? So either way you do it, the opposite of that trinomial, if you think of it that way and you read it that way, you could just write the opposite of that trinomial, or you could treat it as a negative one uh, monomial and multiply each term in the trinomial by negative one. In question 20, multiplication, <laughs> we're going to multiply each term in the binomial by negative 10x, so I'm going to rewrite it as negative 10x multiplied by negative 10x, and then negative 10x multiplied by positive 6. Negative 10x times negative 10x is negative 10 times negative 10, which is a positive 100. x times x is x squared, minus 60x, and that is our solution for number 20. 21 is the division. We still need to use uh, distributive property. We're going to divide both terms of our polynomial by the monomial negative 25x. I'm going to write 50x squared divided by negative 25x. I'm going to write negative 100x divided by negative 25x. I'm going to then think of it, what's that going to be? That's going to be a negative 2x when I divide that all out. That's going to be a 4 or a positive 4 and those x's are going to cancel each other out. I'm left simply with negative 2x plus 4. If you wanted to check your answer, take your monomial and multiply it by your answer. And if you work it out, you should get that as your product. Question 22 is the division of a trinomial by a monomial. Still use distributive property. 21x squared divided by 3, negative 9x divided by 3, and 6 divided by 3. 21x squared divided by 3 will be 7x squared. Negative 9x divided by 3 will be negative 3x. And 6 divided by 3 will be positive 2. And therefore, that is your solution to a third of 21x squared minus 9x plus 6.
Last monotonous question, division of a binomial by a monomial, negative 20x squared y divided by 40xy. This is going to be complicated. 80, not really, xy squared divided by 40xy. Here we go. I'm going to break this down just a little bit easier so you can see it. I'm going to do it like if we were doing division. So negative 20 over 40 multiplied by x squared over x multiplied by y over y. If I break down those two monomials, that's what I get. This is going to become negative 1 over 2. This is going to become x over 1, and this is going to disappear because it's 1 over 1. I'm actually going to end up with a negative x over 2 as a solution, or negative 1x over 2 as a solution. If you wanted to, you could write it differently. You could write it as you could also write it as negative x over 2. You could write the negative sign in front of it. You could also write it as negative a half over x. Or you can write it as negative 0.5x. Just pause and think and meditate and see that all four of those terms are the exact same. If you see them all as the same thing, just choose one of them. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to choose the first one because it's the easiest. I'm going to leave it as is. That's what this division right here works down to. And the other one... That's going to be 2 over 1. That cancels it out. That becomes a y. I'm left with just a positive 8y or plus 8y. So your solution to that question, 23, is a negative half of x plus 8y. Now we're getting into our last three questions. 24 says solve two ways. Explain each. So the first way you could solve this, if you're explaining it, is with bed mass or order of operations. If this was your question, you would solve it by saying 2 plus 9, which would be 18. The other way you could solve it is with distributive property. Distributive property. 2 times 4 and 2 times 5. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 times 5, which is 10. You'll get the same answer of 18 both times. Question 25, same thing. It's the division of a binomial. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have put that yet. First thing you could do is solve with bed mass, which would be 3440. Is that right? No, sorry, 36. 36. 36 divided by 6, which is going to give you an answer of 6. The other way is using distributive property. So 12 plus 24 over 6, using your arrows, can be thought of as 12 over 6 plus 24 over 6, or 2 plus 4, which still equals 6. And your last question, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I think it's a little too big here. Let's just make it a little smaller. It says a dump truck holds 2x cubic meters of soil. You are filling a hole, a hole that is 4x minus 8 meters long, 5x meters wide, and 10 meters high. What is an expression that represents the volume of the hole? So the first thing you need to know is, and you're probably going to do it up here, is you want to draw it. You want to make sure you draw it and put your labels in there. So it doesn't matter which one your monomial is. It doesn't matter which your binomial is. Because length times width, we just learned the associated property doesn't affect the product. So 5x, I'll make the width. 4x minus 8, I'll make the length. And I'll make the, the height 10 meters. So there's a pictorial representation of the hole. It's a rectangular prism. We need to calculate the volume of that. The area of the base times the height of the prism is our formula for the volume of any right prism. Rectangular prisms have rectangular bases. Therefore, it's LW times height. Substitute your data. 5x is going to be my length. Uh, that's going to be my width, and my height is going to be that. So I'm going to substitute in 5x multiplied by 4x minus 8, and then multiplied by, I'm going to use my dot there, 10. There's the substitution. Simplify that using distributive property. So I'm going to first simplify the multiplication of the area of the base, which would be 20x squared minus 40x. That is going to be the area of my base. 
and I have to multiply that by 10. Now, do I multiply 40x by 10, or do I multiply the entire base by 10? I have to multiply that entire base by 10. So because it's two terms, I cannot write this. If I write this, all this is asking me to do is write is multiply that last term by 10, correct? So I don't want to do it, so I need to use brackets. I want to multiply this whole term by 10. So that's what I need to write, just like that. And I need to do distributive property one more time. 200x squared minus 400x. Therefore, the volume is equal to 200x squared minus 400x. Now, all of the work I have written here right now, everything, should be on your test. There shouldn't be anything different that I've written that you should not have. Everything has to be on there. Once we have that, we realize that if a truck holds uh, 2x um, cubic meters of soil, then the volume divided by the capacity of the truck will equal the number of loads. Right? The volume of the uh, hole divided by the capacity of the truck will equal the number of the loads the truck needs to take. So the volume of the hole divided by the capacity of the truck will equal how many truck loads it takes. Here we have the division. We're simply going to use distributive property. 200x squared divided by 2x will equal 100x. And negative 400x divided by 2x will equal negative 200. And therefore, how many trucks will it fill? Now pay attention. Therefore, it will take 100x minus 200 truckloads. Make sure you put your little therefore symbol so I know that you know that that algebraic expression represents the number of truckloads.